Hello, Blake Rudis here with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com, and today I want to talk about Camera Roll 8.5 and just what is new with it. All this hype has been around Photoshop and all this cool new things have been added to Photoshop, but there's been some stuff that's been added to Camera Raw that is really helpful. Beyond the profiles and the, and the raw profiles that you're used to seeing, there's some things in Camera Raw that got adjusted that really do help us as photographers here. So the first thing I want to discuss, let me just go ahead and hit auto on here just to get a baseline is they actually added a preview toggle to go between. Now there used to be a little box up here that you could check and that would give you your before and afters for each panel that you're in. And they took that away. They, they added these uh, three things down here where you could flip between and, and see your before and after. That's a pain in the ass. But now what they've actually done is added the ability to click on this toggle button here so that there's no more headache, no more pain. You don't have to press the P key in order to find the preview. You just go right here and click on this and that will toggle your settings back to what they are as default and then what you've done to fix your photograph. Now. The graduated filter and the radial filter is something that they, they did modify and this is awesome because I used to do my own graduated filters in Photoshop because I had the ability to layer. Well now you can essentially do the same thing right here in Adobe Camera Raw. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and just make a new uh, graduated filter here. Just pull it down. I'm going to pull it down really low so that this graduated filter, let's look at the mask here. Anything that's in blue is the graduated filter. Now you can click on that. You can change it. So I can change that to red. I can change it to yellow or green or whatever happy color I want. Um, and usually something contrasty like red, yellow, green, that usually kind of helps to see your mask. Now yellow is a is a color that exists in a lot of photographs. So I would go with something like maybe deep magenta, maybe deep red to do your masking. Even that dark blue helps out a lot. Now you can change the opacity on there too. If you don't want it to be so bright, you can knock it down. But what I like about it being all the way up is I can see all the stuff that's being affected. So this tells me that up here, really hard and heavy, is where that graduated filter is hitting and then it's graduating its way on down and not affecting the stuff here. Now you can change it to what color is indicated. What's affected or not being affected. I like to see what is being affected. Okay. And you can also change the brightness of that, but if you bring it down, you get pretty much black, and that doesn't really help us. So I'm going to bring that all the way up. That's how I'm going to set up my own uh, mask color. You can choose whatever color you'd like. So I'm just going to go ahead and take that mask off for now, and I'm going to go ahead and just kind of edit this a little bit. I'm really just trying to get a basic, good-looking graduated filter here. Nothing too special, though. Just increase that a little bit. Okay, and I'm not, I'm just kind of going through this pretty quick. I'm not really doing much of anything uh, as far as cognitively is concerned. I just want to show you how this new feature works in Adobe Camera Raw. So now what I can do is I can go into a brush because I wanted that to affect the sky, but I didn't want it to affect my foreground. So if I press the brush option, it's going to give me the ability to edit my uh, graduated filter. So I'm going to turn that mask back on. Now you can set this brush to auto mask. So I'm going to set this brush to something like, I don't know, 10 or 15, and I'm going to paint away areas I don't want to be affected. Now notice how I'm staying in that larger center circle and not going outside that larger center circle around the areas that I don't want to be affected. And I'm just going to paint all that until I don't see any more of that hyper magenta color. Now if by chance it is not clicking not getting an area that I want it to accept, you can just keep clicking until it recognizes that that is an area, or you can take the auto mask off, make your brush a little bit smaller, and just brush in those areas with the auto mask off, because that auto mask is just going to try and find the best areas there without affecting that spot. Okay, so that works pretty well for me. Go ahead and increase it just a little bit, make sure I got all this. Now when I turn that mask off, you'll see that it's only affecting this guy and it's not affecting my foreground. So we can make another graduated filter here. We'll just hit the new button, make another graduated filter and pull it up from the bottom. Now I don't want to use those same settings, so I'm just going to hit one of these plus buttons just to get me back to basics. And I'm just going to increase this to see what I want in that lower section there. Add some magenta to this, maybe take away some saturation because I don't want there to be a whole lot of saturation there. Increase the clarity, get some dinginess in there, maybe increase the shadows a little bit and the highlights. And maybe bring down the exposure to make it a little bit darker and then increase the, high, the contrast. Now, if I go into the brush 
and then click on my mask, I'm going to see that it's a, it's affecting part of my sky. I only want it, I don't want it to affect my sky. So I'm going to turn that auto mask on to get myself a nice baseline and just kind of paint around until all of that kind of goes away. Now this is such a cool feature because I used to do all of my graduated filter masking in Photoshop uh, and sometimes I would skip over this and this can be a really powerful technique, something that you don't necessarily want to skip over um, but because it was kind of limited in uh, Camera Raw to only affect areas uh, in very big chunks and not allow you to mask them out, it was kind of pointless. All right, so now if I click my mask off, you can see that this is only affecting, and I'll turn the overlay off so you don't see that. This is only affecting that bottom portion. So I've got two totally different graduated filters that are both happening by themselves on their own areas without affecting the other areas otherwise. If we didn't do it this way, we would have our gra graduated filters kind of blending into each other and all of the stuff that we were doing would be blended in and it wouldn't necessarily look so good. So this feature is incredible. It's, it's an awesome feature that they've added to not only the graduated filter, they've also added it to the, I forget what this is, the radio filter. And that radio filter, I have yet to use it. So um, I think that got introduced when CC first got introduced and I still haven't used that. A couple features that got introduced during CC that I haven't used are the oil paint filter too. So I don't really miss that one either. But that graduated filter, awesome technique, especially if you're a landscape photographer. I could see the radial filter if you're maybe a portrait photographer, but for us landscape guys, that graduated one's awesome. And now with the ability to make our own masks to segregate those areas only on the areas that we want is awesome. So kudos Photoshop. I know that there's a lot of stuff going around. People have, having issues with bugs and stuff, but you did this right. Again, I'm Blake Rudis with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com. If you like this tutorial, go ahead and comment, share, subscribe. This is one of those things that maybe people don't know about because they're all caught up in the hype of what happened with Photoshop when in actuality something happened with Camera Raw that's really helpful.